Six shocking details revealed in court today. A young musician strangled to death in her home in Hartford was also sexually assaulted. Michelle Fiore reports from West Bend. Jesse Blodgett's parents walked out of court at one point today. The testimony simply too much to take. A detective took the stand. He testified about the relationship of Daniel Bartelt and the victim and some key evidence that he found. The Detective Richard Thickens first spoke with the Daniel Bartelt the day after one. Jesse Blodgett died. There were a number of times um, as he was speaking about Jesse that it appeared that he was um, making gulping and uh, sniffling noises as if he was crying. Um, I noted that I did not see him shed a tear. Bartelt told police he and Jesse were physically intimate, even though they never had sex. But he said he had not seen her in about a week. So he denied being at Jesse's house on July 15, 2013? He did. That's the day Jesse's mom found her daughter strangled to death in her bed. Initially, police did not believe Jesse was sexually assaulted, but it turned out they were wrong. And did you? Uh, uh, potentially later receive some evidence that there uh, may have been a sexual assault. After items were submitted to the state crime lab uh, at the end of that week. Bartelt told police he was at the park the day Jesse died. He indicated that after driving around he arrived at Woodlawn Park approximately 10 a.m. So police searched the park. They found a cereal box in a trash can. It contained various ropes, antiseptic wipes, a SpongeBob towel, and a unique kind of tape. Police later found the same kind of tape in the defendant's basement. Based upon your experience, was it also an unusual mixture of materials to be located in a cereal box? Very much so. More medical experts could take the stand tomorrow, and prosecutors could wrap up their side of the case. In Washington County, Michelle Fiore, today's TMJ4.